Good morning. Thank you for joining me today for our time together in the Word of God. Before we get to the message for today, I want to encourage you to take some time this Memorial Day weekend to think about the privilege that we have to live in the United States of America. Our country isn't perfect, but we still enjoy blessings and freedoms, even in this restricted time during the COVID-19 crisis, that are not enjoyed in many parts of the world today. These freedoms came to us and are maintained today at a cost. You've probably heard before the little phrase, freedom isn't free. So this Memorial Day weekend, we want to honor those who gave their lives so that we might live free. We also honor those who are currently serving our country in the, in the military today, also so that we might live free. So take some time this Memorial Day weekend to think about these things and take the time to thank God for your freedom and for those who have sacrificed for your freedom. If you have not already done so, uh, take the time to watch and listen to uh, Linda Park's video that's a part of the email uh, where she plays the song Tribute to America. There are lots of words that are available for us today. Words to read, words to listen to, uh, whether it's on the news or in the newspaper, um, on Facebook, or a variety of other sources. Sometimes we choose the words that we want to see and hear, and sometimes we have no choice. However, there are words that we need to hear, that we need to hear as we navigate this current situation. The words we need to hear come from God's word. For the next several weeks, I want to share a, a mini series with you called Words We Need to Hear. Each week, we will focus on one word, and we'll look at a passage of scripture that teaches us about that one word. Today, the word that we need to hear is the word hope. If you have your Bible with you, I encourage you to open with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to be considering verses 3, 4, and 5 there to see what the Bible has to say about hope. Listen as I read these verses. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The word hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. There's a lot of that kind of hope going on around us today. Hope, expectation, desire. Hope that our world will get back to normal. Hope that the economy will get going again. Hope that we can start to gather once again. Hope that the virus will be eliminated. Often we aren't very hopeful that our hope will be fulfilled. That's the problem with earthly hope. Yes, there's desire and even expectation, but there's always the question, will it really happen? Bible hope, however, is different from earthly hope. Yes, Bible hope includes expectation and desire, but it also includes confidence and joyful anticipation. Bible hope is a no-so hope. It's not simply a hope-so hope. Bible hope is, is different and confident and full of joyful anticipation because it comes from the promise of God and it comes from the word of God. And we know that God and his word never fail. The word hope is a word we need to hear because hope, Bible hope, looks beyond. It looks past this life. It looks past this world to eternal life in heaven. And we need this hope because it is the confident expectation and desire. It's the joyful anticipation of heaven. That's a word we need to hear. 
1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 5 give us a, a beautiful threefold description of hope, of this, this Bible hope, God's hope, the hope that we have of eternal life. Notice with me what Peter writes. First of all, he speaks of a living hope in verse 3. Notice again, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 is, is full of, of life and hope. Peter calls this hope a living hope, and he, he gives a couple of reasons why this is a living hope. First of all, it's a living hope because it comes to us through the gift of new life. He says here that God has begotten us to this living hope. The word begotten uh, talks about bringing into existence, and in a spiritual sense, it's talking about God bringing us into existence to this living hope. Jesus called this being born again. In John chapter 3, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, one of the religious leaders of the day. And he said to him in verse 3 of John 3, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Or we could say, unless one is born again, he has no hope. In verse 7, he said, you must be born again. To be born again is to be born spiritually, to be born of God. We are born again when we put our faith in Jesus Christ alone for forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Sin means death. Romans 6.23 says that the wages or the payment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So to be born again is to know spiritual life. Jesus also said in this born again passage of John chapter 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you been born again? If the only birth that you have is a physical birth, then you have no hope of eternal life in heaven. If you've been born, born again, then God has given you new life, and you have a living hope. So it's a living hope because it comes to us through the gift of new life, of being born again. But it's also a living hope because it comes to us, as verse 3 says, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice he says that this living hope has come through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, Peter knew the living power of the resurrection. He, he, had, he saw the empty tomb uh, the very day of the resurrection. He saw the risen Savior. He knew that if God can bring Jesus back to life from the dead, that he can also bring us from spiritual death to spiritual life. The power of resurrection life is great enough to forgive any and all sin, and it's great enough to guarantee this living hope, this eternal life in heaven. That's why the resurrection is part of the gospel message. Listen to what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel by which also you are saved. For I delivered to you first of all, or as of first importance, that that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Remember what Jesus said to Lazarus' sister Martha after Lazarus, Jesus' friend, had died and, and before Jesus had brought him back to life? Remember what we read in John chapter 11? Listen. He said this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? You see, the resurrection is part of the gospel. It's part of what we must believe because it's uh, Christ's resurrection that shows us that he has power over death. And so we have to answer the question that he asked Martha, do you believe this? Bible hope, God's hope, is a living hope. It's offered to us and it's, it's given to all who believe because of God's, as it says here in verse 3, because of his abundant mercy 
it's not what we deserve, but it's a wonderful gift that he offers to us, even though we don't deserve it. Not only is Bible hope a living hope, but we see in verse 4 that it's also a perfect hope. As Peter writes about the hope that believers have, he, he calls it or he refers to it here as an inheritance. Listen to verse 4. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Romans 8 verses 16 and 17 tell us that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ and are born again, we become children of God. And that means that we are heirs of God. That means we have an inheritance. And so he talks about this inheritance now in 1 Peter. That inheritance is our hope, the hope of eternal life in heaven. And this inheritance, this hope is perfect. Notice how Paul, or excuse me, how Peter describes this hope, this inheritance. He says, first of all, it is incorruptible uh, to be free from corruption of any type. Matthew chapter 6 verse 20 uh, speaks of laying up treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys. In heaven there is no corruption. Secondly, he says that it is undefiled. There is no stain or defilement. Nothing can touch it. Nothing can make it decay. And thirdly, he says that it does not fade away. Uh, that has the idea of never becoming old or worn. The passing of time has no effect on anything in heaven. Nothing ages like we do here on earth. J. Vernon McGee penned this little poem. He said, It will always be new. It will never decay. No night ever comes. It will always be day. How it gladdens my heart with a joy that's untold to think of that land where nothing grows old. That's the hope of the believer. Our inheritance is, is heaven, and heaven is perfect. It's incorruptible. It's undefiled. It does not fade away. Bible hope, the believer's hope, is a living hope. It's a perfect hope. But thirdly, we see here that it's a secure hope. Listen again to verse 4 and then verse 5. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The believer's hope is a secure hope. Peter shows this in two ways here in these two verses. First of all, he shows us that the believer's inheritance is kept securely for the believer. It's reserved in heaven for you, is what he says. The idea there is to guard from loss, that our inheritance in heaven is guarded from loss. It's an eternal safety deposit box. Heaven is reserved for you, and, and salvation is your key to that eternal safety deposit box. And not only is the believer's inheritance kept securely for the believer, but he also shows us here that the believer is kept securely for the inheritance. Verse 5, he says, you are kept by the power of God. The word kept means to, to guard or or to protect. Uh, it talks of eternal security for the believer. The fact that a believer in Jesus Christ has a reservation that cannot be canceled. Now, how do we know this? Well, it says it's kept by the power of God. And God is all-powerful. Uh, Jesus referred to this security in John chapter 10 when he said, And I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. Neither can anyone pluck them out of my hand? My Father who gave them to me is greater than all, and no one can pluck them out of my Father's hand. Now, how do we get this secure, permanent, kept reservation in heaven? Well, he says here, he shows us, he says, through faith for salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 tell us that, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it's a gift from God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. By God's grace alone, through 
faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, we have an inheritance. We have forgiveness. We have this hope. Forgiveness and hope is not found in good works. It's not found in religion or our family heritage. It's not found in going to church. It only comes through faith in Jesus Christ who died, was buried, and rose again to provide salvation. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? If not, you're without hope. If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, then you have this secure hope that he talks about here. Won't you believe today? I love how Peter finishes his thoughts here uh, at the end of verse 5 about this secure hope. Notice he says that it is ready to be revealed in the last time. I love that. The hope of the believer is that the hope of heaven is ready and waiting for us. If you're a believer, when your time on this earth is done, your inheritance, your hope, your home in heaven is secure. It's ready and waiting. You remember what Jesus said in John chapter 14? I love these familiar verses. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or dwellings. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. One of his disciples said, well, how do we know the way to this inheritance, to this dwelling that you're preparing? And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our hope is a secure hope prepared by God for us. Today's word that we need to hear is hope. A living hope. It's ours through new life being born again. It's ours through the resurrection of Jesus, the power of life. A perfect hope. Heaven, our hope, is a perfect place, incorruptible, no corruption there, undefiled, no stain or decay. It does not fade away. It never ages. A secure hope. Our inheritance is being kept securely for us in heaven, and we are being kept securely for the day when we receive that inheritance. Heaven, our hope, is ready and waiting. Hope. That's a word we need to hear. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ alone? I'd love to talk to you more if you have questions about what we've talked about today. You can send me an email in response to the email you received, or you can message me on Facebook. I'd love to talk to you more. And if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, and I trust that that is you today, I hope it is, are you focusing on your hope instead of focusing on your problems? Are you focusing on your eternal hope instead of focusing on the uncertainty that is all around you? I'm so thankful for hope. It's a word that we need to hear. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we thank you that, as you say in your word, that you have prepared a place for us in heaven and so that our perspective, our vision, can be beyond the here and now. Thank you that it's a living hope uh, because it's based on life. Thank you that uh, it is a secure hope that, that no one can take it away. Thank you that it is a perfect hope. God, we're so grateful that in Jesus we have all of this to look for. And I pray, Lord, if there's anyone listening today that has never placed their faith in Jesus, that even right now in this quiet moment, they would realize their sinfulness and call out to you from their heart and ask you to forgive them and to be their Savior and then that they would realize that they then have hope. Thank you for our hope in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Next Sunday, Lord willing, we'll look at another word that we need to hear and the plan is to look at the word joy next Sunday. I hope you'll join me. In the meantime, stay safe, stay faithful. I love you all.
Goodbye.